What's up guys, my name is Liam, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Vaxi NP01S wireless gaming mouse. Vaxi has made a really incredible mouse here and I've been enjoying it, but is this going to be the perfect gaming mouse for you? Let's check it out. Alright guys, and here we got the Vaxi NP01S. I did opt for it in the light blue colorway. I truly feel like this colorway looks awesome. And in the box, it did come with this cable and it also came with this dongle and dongle adapter. When going to the bottom, it does come with pretty much the similar style skates that were included on the previous Vaxi XE wireless. The skates that do come on the mouse, they're not that bad. They are a bit harder. They do feel a little harsh on very high textured surfaces and on softer pads. However, on speed pads, harder pads, glass pads, stuff like that, I truly feel like that they perform great. And this mouse does come with the similar specs. We got the 3395 sensor in here. And then down here to the left, you have the DPI button obviously swap DPIs. Right here in the middle, you can control the polling rate. It does give you the option to switch between 125 hertz, 500 hertz, or 1000 hertz polling rate. And then over here to the right is where you control the debounce time for the click setting. It allows you to either choose a two millisecond click debounce time, four milliseconds, or eight milliseconds. And for my recommend settings, I always recommend that you play at the 1000 hertz polling rate with the lowest two millisecond to bounce time to give you the lowest click latency possible. However, if you are experiencing any issues like double clicking or anything, it does give you the option on the bottom of the mouse to adjust that. And then over here to the right side, you have the power button, very simple, green is on, red is off. This mouse also does come with motion sync and it gives you the ability to either turn the motion sync off or to leave it on. And if you wanna make sure that you have motion sync either disabled or enabled on the mouse, all you do is you hold down the DPI button while the mouse is turned off and then you turn the mouse on. Now, as you can see there, I did get a blue LED light indicator. So when you do get the blue flash, that shows you that motion sync is actually turned off. And if I were to do it again, this time it gave me a green LED indicator and that's showing that motion sync has been turned on and enabled. And if you were to repeat the same steps on the polling rate button, hold it down and turn the mouse on. What this will actually do is it does control the lift off distance. And as you can see there, it flashed on a thousand hertz polling rate. So that's how you get a high lift off distance. And if I were to do it again, once it does flash on the 125 hertz, that's how you know that you have the low lift off distance enabled. And then finally, this mouse comes with two modes. It comes with a normal mode and a competitive mode. And if you were to hold the debounce setting button while turning the mouse on, if the mouse flashes just one LED indicator in the middle, that's actually gonna give you the standard mode. And when using this mouse in the standard mode, if you do care about battery life, it's actually gonna give you about an average of 100 hours of battery life. And then if we were to do the same step one more time, holding down the debounce button while turning it on, and once you see all three of the LED indicators flashing, that lets you know that competitive mode is enabled. And when you're in competitive mode, you get 55 hours of battery life. I was playing with all these settings. I do kind of prefer motion sync enabled since I've gotten so used to it. And when it comes to the standard mode and competitive mode, there's not a whole lot of difference. I did feel like more than anything, it made the mouse feel smoother. Didn't really notice that much of a difference in responsiveness or anything like that. However, if you are an enthusiast and you game competitively, I would highly suggest leaving the competitive mode turned on. All right, and coming back over to the top of the mouse, I really feel like the construction on my copy is built really well. It is really solid. When I first got the mouse out of the box, I was getting some very minimal slight creaking on the side of the hump here. And I do wanna let you guys know that for whatever reason, it's pretty much gone away. It's not even really there anymore. So perhaps it was just a shell seating into the mouse itself. There has been a couple users claiming that they've had some creaking going on the right side. And Vaxi actually made a post that if you are having severe creaking issues on the side of the mouse, that they're gonna replace it for you. So kudos to them for that, obviously. Really great to see that they're taking care of the community. Jumping over here to the clicks, Honestly, these clicks feel really solid. There's very minimal left to right play, and I feel like they've drastically improved the click quality on this mouse compared to some of the issues that I was having on my XE wireless. There is a slight bit of pre-travel on mouse one and on mouse two, but it's nothing horrible, and truthfully, these clicks feel pretty good. They don't feel as light as the Juano Blue Shell Pink Dots that I was using on the Lamsu Atlantis OG V2 4K alongside this mouse while testing it out. Though they are very easy to spam. And the good thing is that I feel like on this mouse, they really fixed the post travel on these buttons. As you can see here, once you do activate the switch, 
It doesn't have any problems slapping up against the base of the mouse or anything like that. So I have to say kudos to Vaxi for really improving on these clicks and I truly feel like they work great. I didn't have a single issue with them and they feel awesome in gaming. I feel like this scroll is a huge improvement. I felt like on the XE Wireless it just had a little bit too much rubber on it. This one I feel like the rubber is just right. And truthfully on the scroll wheel you get a nice grip on it. The steps feel nice to find, solid. Even the middle click, it just feels perfect, easy to spam. And then when it comes to the side buttons, the side buttons, they honestly feel perfect on here. There's like absolutely no pre-travel. Just perfect, nice and clicky, easy to spam. There is a slight bit of post-travel, but it does meet kind of a hard stop there in the back and not a whole lot of play on them. Overall, the side buttons just feel incredible. One thing I did want to mention, however, about the side buttons, as you can clearly see here, is they're very close together. And when rubbing your fingers across them, you do kind of feel that it's hard to find a difference between the two. But I do want to say that in gameplay, the way that I was gripping the mouse, I don't think I ever had an issue once where it became a problem or accidentally activated the wrong switch. And when it comes to the coating, truly the coating on this mouse feels fantastic. I didn't have any problems with it slipping in my hands. It's nice and grippy, and overall, it truly does add an enjoyable experience. The only one thing that I did notice about this mouse, and honestly, it's not even a problem at all whatsoever, if you do give it the death grip from the side, basically with two hands, I mean, I guess you could do it with one hand if you're squeezing incredibly hard. You can still slightly activate the side buttons. However, when I was gripping this mouse and in gameplay, I was trying to push on as hard as I could and I was not able to activate the side buttons at all, not even get close to it when I was just one hand gripping it myself personally. And next up, when it comes to the weight and the balance of this mouse, it really does have incredible weight balance really good on the left to right so really great stuff from vaxi in that department all around in the hand this thing just feels incredible and when it comes to the weight of the mouse looks like it's coming in at approximately 69 grams so let's go ahead and drop a sound test on how the clicks sound and perform And finally, when it comes to the shape, it is actually a pretty unique shape. When it comes to the side curve profile, as you can see, it clearly has that ergo style shape to it. But then when it comes to the top profile, this mouse honestly sits very flat at the top. And as you can see, it looks more like an ambi style towards the front. And as I was gripping this, I feel like this is definitely made to be for claw grip or palm grip users best. It kind of forces you to put your thumb back here on this hump to the side, because if you did have longer hands and you're trying to grip this mouse from the front, as you can see there, this curve right here kind of pushes up against your hands and you kind of have this gap right here. And I do feel like you can pull off finger gripping this. However, it is a bit of a longer mouse. So I did find when I was finger tipping it that it kind of hit my palm quite a bit. And another thing that I wanted to point out that was kind of odd when I first got it is as you can see here, the buttons, they actually sit really far forward. And I'm not saying this is a problem or anything. It just was kind of weird to get used to at first since I'd never used this shape before. But now that I've gotten used to it, every time I pick this mouse up, I kind of know what to expect. And I don't feel like it interrupted or interfered with my gameplay at all in any way. And when comparing the NP01S to some other similar types of mice that are out there on the market, I do feel like the Wise Owl OGM Pro does kind of have some same similarities as the Vaxi does. Both of these mice have that similar ergo shape style to the side profiling. However, as you can see here, clearly the Wise Owl OGM Pro Definitely feels like just a much bigger mouse. Not so much in the length, they're pretty similar, but it clearly feels like a much wider mouse. And as you can clearly see, coming over here to the top profile, the Wise Out OGM Pro definitely has a much higher middle hump on it. And it quickly tapers off towards the rear. Towards overall, the Vaxi, it feels like a much flatter profile towards the top and then tapering off to the rear once you get further back on the mouse. And with these differences, even though these mice look similar in length, it does make the Wise Owl feel like obviously a taller and shorter mouse overall in the hands. Whereas the Vax just feels lower to the ground, it feels flatter and it gives you a more narrow and longer feeling in the hands. Either way, I really enjoy the uniqueness and differences that these shapes offer and they've been really fun to use.
Next up, we'll be comparing it to the Pulsar X-Lite V2 Mini. Both of these mice actually feel really similar in size. I guess I could say that the X-Lite V2 just feels a little bit wider in the hands, but the biggest difference is clearly gonna be that the X-Lite V2 has way more aggressive curves on it. As you can see here on the side profiling, the Vaxi mouse, like I said, it kind of feels more even and more like an ambi style mouse towards the front. The X-Lite V2 gets more narrow at the base and it kind of flares out kind of more wide at the top. And overall, it makes the curves just stick out on it a lot more. And then coming over to the top profile, this is where you can really see it feels like a night and day to where the vaccine just feels flat front to back, left to right and the Pulsar has just way more curves left to right, front to back. So though both of these mice are really similar in size, the shapes are pretty unique on both of them and they kind of force you to have a specific type of grip while you're using them both. All right, and then finally, I'll be comparing the NP01S to the VGN Dragonfly. Though these mice are different shapes, they do have some similarities, even though coming over here to the bottom, the VGN Dragonfly, as you can clearly see, is more of an ambi style. It does feel a bit wider, whereas the Vaxi has that ergo shape. When it comes to the top profiling, they honestly feel pretty similar to one another as far as having a flat top profiling. But when it comes to how I actually grip and hold the mice, they do kind of feel like they do have some similarities in the hands. I would say, however, that the VGN Dragonfly it just kind of has a softer taper even though it's flatter on top, it kind of falls into your hands less aggressively to where I do feel like on the vaccine, I do feel like it kind of sticks in your palm a bit more and it can give you the option of giving you some more stability if that's what you're looking for. Alright guys, so that's my final thoughts on the Vaxi NP01S. I am really impressed with what Vaxi has done. I really do feel like they've stepped it up with the build quality here. The customer service support has really improved. And overall, when I was using this in-game, it was really fun, enjoyable to use, and it worked perfectly for me. So I really do feel like that leaves me the confidence to say, if you are interested in the shape and you have liked what you've seen, you feel like it could work out for you, I would absolutely give this two thumbs up and recommend checking it out. Alright guys, so if you feel like I left anything out or you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. Aside from that, if you did enjoy watching this video and you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.